Okay, so um, my name is Mar Young. I'm the principal of C3PR. We're a Silicon Valley based PR agency. We help uh, high tech companies get noticed and get results. Okay, so um, I started this business, oh, gee, it's, we're going to have our 10 year anniversary next year. And if you looked at the title of what I'm going to be speaking about, it's called uh, Make Big Bucks in Your Bathrobe. <laughs> and if you think that's funny, well, honestly, that, that describes a typical day. It really does. Um, I get up about 6 o'clock. I start answering emails. I commute 23 steps from the bedroom to my office. And while I'm waiting for the cappuccino maker to heat up, I start answering the emails from Germany that came in, my client um, from the night before. Then I do the emails from the East Coast, and now I'm yet, before I get to the emails from the West Coast, there are answers to the emails that I sent out first. And uh, these aren't just these little like chatty, oh hi, how you doing emails. Every one of these is something that requires me to do something. So like for example, I'll get an email or a call from an editor who'll say, you know what, I have uh, this, our magazine is closing today, a company was supposed to give us an article, they didn't give it to us. They flaked out. If you can get us a thousand words by five o'clock, the space is yours. So of course I'm going to say, yeah, we can do that. I can do a thousand words by five o'clock. And then of course I have to hang up the phone and then go, okay, what client can you know? Can I do the story for? Who can write it? You know, do they have the budget to do it? Or can we take another story we've already written and kind of repurpose it? You know, or or another call will be from a client who says. Uh, Okay, you know that uh, email blast that's going out at noon? You know, the one that references the white paper that you guys wrote that's been on the website since last week? Well, uh, one of our engineers just bothered to look at the white paper and the specs are wrong. So <laughs> you gotta, you can't do the email. It's like, well, I can't, we can't do the email. We've been doing all this testing. So then I will get the account associate who will call the engineer, who will find the right specs, who will call the art director and get the job done right, and the email will go out at noon. And um, this is the kind of thing that goes on all day long so that 4 o'clock comes, I'm still in my bathroom. I have not bothered to get dressed, I have not gone to eat. And lest you think that I'm unusual, you know, that I'm this weird person who sits around in a bathroom, <laughs> I can call my associates at 4 o'clock and go, you still in your bunny slippers? <laughs> and if they laugh, I know they're still in their bunny slippers. I mean, this is just, this is the thing, you know. It's, it's, I have an associate in Modesto, uh, one in Martinez, um, and Boulder Creek, and we all work out of our homes, and we all stay in our bathroom most of the day and wear our bunny slippers. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so you think, okay, a home-based business. You know, why would you, why would you want a home-based business? Because you will work harder with a home-based business than you will in a normal company because you never get away from it. You never do, yeah, you know, you never get away. It's, it's always there. Um, you don't get paid for sick time. You work when you're sick. You know, you, you may plan a vacation, but you're probably going to work during your vacation. And when it comes to the end of the month and, you know, they're handing out, you're handing out the checks, you're the last in line. Everybody else gets paid, you know. So, so why would you want to do this? Well, um, it used to be that, that especially women would say, well, I'm going to start a home-based business because I want more time with my kids. <laughs> Wrong. It doesn't work that way. Let me tell you, if, if you've got a home-based business and you have a baby, your baby's going to love your, the nanny more than the baby loves you. I, you're, or more, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna get a phone call from a client and say, oh, no, what's that noise? No, 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 that's not a baby crying, that's my cat. I'm a really weird cat, there's no baby. Yeah. You're gonna, then when you have toddlers, you're gonna teach your toddlers that unless there is blood or fire, there is no reason to interrupt mom. Mom is on the phone, do not interrupt mom. You know, it's just what they learn. Then you have, and this is, you can tell, this is all true. These are real <laughs> stories. Um, and then let's say you have uh, elementary school kids. There's going to be the day when you are just racing like mad to get to the school because you were supposed to go on a field trip, but you had to talk to an editor, and you drive up, and there goes the school bus, and you're driving behind the school bus, and there's your kid in the back of the car. <laughs> you know, and, 
you, you make it to the, you know, make it to Happy Hollow, you do get there, you do the field trip, but you're not one of the nice put together moms who are on the bus and have all the snacks. You know? <laughs> uh, it's true. And then when you've got when you've got teenagers, okay, your teenagers will be happy, like say they do a cross country <coughs> meet, they know you're not gonna make it when the gun sounds and they all take off, but you usually make it when they're at the finish line. You know, and, like, and, and so they, your whole family learns, but if you're starting a business to have more time with your kids, you know, that's not a good reason to start one. So um, what is a good reason? Well, what I can do, I can tell you why I started uh, C3PR. Um, when I graduated from San Jose State, I didn't want to go into business for myself. I had a degree in PR, and the first thing I did was go work at an agency then you know, go work at a company, then go work at an agency, and you keep doing this and you're moving up the ladder, right? So I was working at uh, Franklin Electric, I was the uh, marketing communications manager, and the company was bought by Liebert, which is a big corporation. And so I had three choices then. They decided they were gonna shut us down. They were gonna consolidate all the operations. So I had three choices at that point. Um, I could have become director of corporate communications, three times the salary. I mean, great career, okay, really good. I could have also gone to work for the PR agency that we use. Again, I would have gone into the agency as an account executive. Um, I would have leapfrogged what a lot of my associates um, and classmates were doing at that time. Another, and if, if I had known at that time that I was gonna start a PR agency, that's what I should have done. You know, I should have learned more about what a big agency does. You know, but I wasn't going to do that. I mean, I didn't have that kind of plan. I chose door number three. <laughs> door number three. Okay, so we worked with a graphic design firm. There are two designers, and they had uh, their studio in the living room. And they, um, I would go over there during my work day. And there they are, and they're in their jeans, and we're drinking tea, and all these interesting people are coming by, and I'm thinking, wow, this is like playing hooky from school. You know, I mean, all these, I'm in an office with all the politics, and I gotta get dressed. These guys are here, they're having fun, they're making money, come on. You know, there's, ah, this is what I should do. So when, uh, when I didn't know what to do, oh my God, should I uh, become corporate uh, communications manager and move to Bluffton, Indiana? No, don't. Yeah. Okay, should I take the job at the PR agency? Well, that's probably a better option. But then they said, no, why don't we form a company? Because, you know, we're losing our best client with, you know, not being able to work for you anymore, so why don't you come work for us? We'll start our own company and we'll have lots of fun and make lots of money. And so that's how our first company, Communique, was born. We did, we had fun. We used to have what we called communications. And we did a bar and invite all of our clients and, you know, just, just have a great old time. That lasted about two years. And after about two years, um, we got hit with the perfect business killer storm. Uh, first thing that happened was a big company opened up a division in Santa Clara. They called it Communique just like our name. So we, had, we trademarked our name. You know, they, they shouldn't have been able to do that. We wrote them a letter, well, a lawyer wrote them a letter, and um, we said like cease and desist, and what they said was, so sue us. And so we said, okay, we will. And we started a lawsuit. Um, it cost a lot of money. It took a lot of time. Um, it just drained everyone's resources, and I don't know if these are connected, but Within a few months, um, the two graphic designers, they were husband and wife, they decided to get divorced. And they said, here, take everything, I don't care. One of us is going to Oregon, one of us is going to LA. Here, business is yours. <coughs> hire some more designers. Uh, so I tried that for a little while, and it was just depressing. You know, I was all by myself. I just, I couldn't make it work. So I went back into the uh, corporate side and the agency side, and I kept doing that for a little while. Um, and then, you know, it just, it, it, things, things were at first really great again because it was the dot-com bubble and we had a lot of work and we were making a lot of money. I wasn't going to go start another business. I had enough of that. 
And then came the dot-com bust. And suddenly all my friends were getting laid off. There were no jobs. Um, and what am I going to do? I didn't have, you know, I was getting laid off too. So then um, I remembered my, my husband's in the audience and his grandparents on both sides started businesses during the Depression. And they were really successful businesses. So I thought, okay, this is a good time. You know, I mean, business is down, but if it's got to come back, you know, and it's got to come back. So when it comes back, I'm going to be ready. And that's when I started communicating. That was, uh, or excuse me, C3PO, wrong business. That's when I started my second business, C3PO. And so now you wonder, all right, I made that leap. Uh, now this uh, next year will be our 10th year. We should approach about a uh, quarter million in billings next year. We're probably going to add associates. And this morning, I got the news that we got the contract to do PR for Connectivity World, a big trade show in May. So you guys, May 23rd, I want to see you all over in Santa Clara. Um, it's great. Connectivity World is all about beyond the smart grid. Okay, but so now you know about me, but you're probably wondering what does it take to make the leap? You know, what, what inside you would make you want to be an entrepreneur to start your own business? Well, I think there are really three things, okay? I, I think the first one is, um, well, it takes, it's either in your blood, or it's in your heart, or it's in your head, um, and a little bit of all. But first, how many people here have parents who started businesses? Or, oh, good, yeah, I knew there'd be at least three or four, so this is great. Um, if you had a parent who had a business or a father, a, a, you know, a relative, you know what it takes. Um, my dad was a electrician. He worked, he had a full-time job at a paper mill. Um, he had a series of businesses, none of them very successful, but that didn't stop him from trying to start something else. And the one I remember the most is he had this um, motor rewinding shop at the outskirts of town. And uh, during the summers, he would take me there, and I would get to play secretary. And, uh, you know, I mean, it wasn't like it was this busy business, okay? People came, people left, you know. Not, not much happening. But I always knew that, that this was going to be, you know, I had ideas. And I, I, in, my, in my blood, I knew that <coughs> I was going to do this too. Uh, the second reason that you might be an entrepreneur is if it's in your heart. If you, you know, if you don't have parents who were in business or a relative who's in business, you may be the first. So if you have this desire, this idea to do something, then you want to go and do it, okay? But there's one problem. You can be so enthusiastic that it might blind you. You might not make good decisions. So the last part is having it in your head, okay? And if you have it in your head, of what you want to do, um, and like you're doing now, you're all studying, you're learning things, then that's the best chance of success. And um, just to tell you that if you surround yourself with people who have businesses and entrepreneurs, you also have a better chance. Um, and to prove the thing about the blood, in my family, there are, uh, when I was growing up, I have uh, three siblings. My sister's here in the audience, and she and her husband have a UPS store in Martinez, and they, um, and she also helps me in my business. And my brother, he's the uh, cinder feller of the family. Um, he started in a garage, in a, a storage shed, started rewind, kind of rewinding motors. He started designing amplifiers, and last year he sold the business for $30 million to Heiko. Did he retire? You know, he's still their CEO, still working his butt off, like we are, you know, but the, the big thing about if, if you're going to, if you're thinking about making the leap, don't be afraid to do it. Don't be one of those people that down the road said, oh, God, I wish I could have started a business. I just, the time wasn't right. I didn't have the money. And just do it, you know, go out and do it and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, you can start another one. <laughs> Thank you.